I, I wrote a really long blog post about Carl 25 years or through the cen centuries, I want to say, uh, through the years at least. Uh, so, uh, well, as has been said, uh, hey, hang on a minute. There. Um, so I started everything curl. I started curl in, in March 20, uh, 1998 when I uploaded curl 4.0. And that's um, this was a new version of the, since I had a, the tool already, it was called URL get before that. And uh, I renamed it to curl. So I did a, a URL get release just the week before. So I had just done uh, another release and then you know I, I just renamed it uh, changed the director name and stuff and then then I built another release and uploaded it so for me this was not something really special moment it just it just was another release and had done a lot of URL get releases I did URL get 3.12 I think the week before that so and that was basically I think maybe those 12 releases within the same year or something so quite a lot of releases and then yeah i shipped a new version uh, and that was named curl instead i re uh, retained the version numbers from before so 3.12 of the url get so i changed name i should bump the version number so i bumped the version number to version 4 4.0 in march 20. and then at that point there was 24 command line options um it worked with urls already because i figured that was a good interface for it. I, I uh, initially released it as uh, uh, released as GPL and then later that year I actually changed it to MPL because I figured that was more in line with a, with my thinking of licensing really. Uh, of course that turned out later to not be very clever but uh, that's my initial thing and I, I hosted this web page on my personal web page on my company website. On I worked for the company called Frontech back then. Later that year in 1998, uh, we added support for HTTPS with the uh, precursor to OpenSSL called SSLI, however you pronounce that library. Um, I've never actually heard anyone who can say that this is how you pronounce it, so I don't know. But anyway, that's, that's the library that existed before, that later, I think later in 98, they uh, created the OpenSSL project based on that library. I didn't know much about TLS or SSL. It was still only SSL back then, but I didn't know much about it. I didn't, uh, you know, certificate verification stuff. I, di I did not know about that, but I, I learned later on. And we supported HTTP proxy then already in that year. Added support for Telnet. Not the most clever thing we did um, because it's not a very good fit. <clears throat> and then um, support for the .NET RC parser, of course, uh, an ever uh, present reason for argu discussions, arguments, and how to do that because net, that the .NET RC parsing is not there's no standard for the, the .NET RC file. It's just weird. And I I did the first man page for curl, and then it was it was a simple time right 24 command line options they were all described pretty briefly it wasn't a big of a man page so when we got into 1999 i i did the first configure script so i figured out how to, oh right you actually write a uh, auto tool or configure script and you generate this i oh that's the way to do it uh, the support for cookies cookies there was no well I mean, there was no real spec for cookies back then. There was a, basically that original file that um, Firefox uh, wrote. Uh, sorry, not Firefox, but um, Mozilla. Mo Mozilla, Mozilla, I guess. Yeah, so yeah, Mozilla, and they wrote it and they hosted it. Basically, that, that was a single page, uh, very short. It didn't really, really help much, but. <laughs> <laughs> that was basically the only thing that existed. Later through the years, people like actually tried to document the uh, or actually create specifications for cookies. There were a few attempts to do it, but they were all sort of failed attempts until the cookie spec actually was, I think it finally was published in 2012 or some, something. Uh, so it took a long time until it was actually documented. And then we had the support for Dict. 
um, not the most used protocol in curl. We still support it. And it was became a package in Debian. I think Debian was the first Linux distro to uh, package curl. I think it also got into Red Hat uh, Linux early on in that year. And then we added support for more protocols and we released, as you can see, we did a lot of version numbering back in those days. Version six already in September 99. Um, I don't remember exactly why, maybe it was those new uh, protocols. And very late in 1999, we imported curl into SourceForge. SourceForge was started late 99. I, I mean, I, I wasn't there on the day it's opened its doors, but pretty much, I think. I think it was not old when I created my account and, and created the curl repository on SourceForge. So I think the date is like late December 99. And for some reason, uh, I, I just imported all the code, not the co not the history. So unfortunately, I don't have the commit history for anything before I imported that code into SourceForge. Um, and then we moved the site to a new domain, or actually we registered because I had my company, my own company by then, and it was called Hacks, and I wasn't allowed to register the domain hacks.se, so I re registered hacks.nu and you and uh, new in Swedish. So uh, that became the new Carl website. So in, in 2000, then, the rules for the uh, top level domain .se changed, so I could register uh, for real the hacks.sc domain instead, because SC, you know, I'm from Sweden, this was a Swedish site. I created that, uh, our company site, and I created the curl website there. And in the summer of 2000, I rewrote internals. I, I already had this sort of the remote idea of making a library out of curl because I figured maybe someone else would uh, like to use this in their applications, maybe. And I had already before this, earlier in the 90s, I, I wrote a, a library for doing, actually wrote my own programming language and I turned that into a library. And I did some other libraries when I worked on the Amiga. So back in the, even earlier 90s. So I had some sort of experiences and thoughts and, and I think libraries are cool. Why not make a library for internet transfers? So we created, I created libcurl in the summer of, of 2000 and, and version seven, I think we called it version 7.1 and released in August in 2000. And it mean pretty much immediately, I don't know exactly, I don't remember exactly how long it took, but PHP, the language, they found libcurl, adopted it and said, hey, we're going to use this as, as our primary internet transfer thing for, for the PHP. And they made a binding for it so they could export the libcurl functions and, and provide that in PHP. And we got our first CVE. Um, it wasn't a CVE until later, but the first security vulnerability at least. And we started making a test suite. So to make sure that things actually stayed working while we continued to change things. So it took a while. I mean, this is now two years in and we created the test suite. And you know, things continued to, this is just three years in, right? And we, I realized that MPL being the Mozilla public license was not very, a very good choice because of the problems with MPL. MPL, and this is the initial version of MPL, I think it was called MPL at 1.0. It has problems. It is not compatible with GPL, for example. So GPL users, uh, or they were unhappy with it because they could then not use libcurl if this was, it was MPL. So I added another option to do it, MIT or MPL, which was a bit of a weird thing to do. Uh, <clears throat> So later we would remove the MPL option, but we started like that. Um, and for some reason, it's, it's not mentioned in these slides, I guess, some reason, for some reason, we poked uh, on the text of the MIT license. So, and uh, <laughs> I don't remember, <laughs> for uh, a stupid reason, but we changed some wording. So it's no longer recognized exactly as an MIT license because it has some modified wording. It's basically the same, but it's not exactly the same. So it's mostly called the curl license these days. And we had a support for HTTP 1.1, which, um, and you know, maybe you don't know, but the biggest difference between HTTP 1.0 and 1.1 is, is that with HTTP 1.1, you basically have 
connection, uh, persistent connections by default. It is made to reuse TCP connections, right? So you can set up a connection to a server and use that connection to do many requests. Just keep you, uh, doing the right thing and you can keep the connection alive and do many requests, which is a huge performance benefit. And that's the primary thing why, why HP 1.1 was made. It has some other features as well that wasn't around in 1.0, but still we adopted curl for that. We added support for IPv6 and uh, early uh, already then Mac OS Apple then shipped the first curl they shipped into in with Mac OS was done in, uh, I don't remember, I think it was late 2001 and they shipped curl 7.7.2 in their Mac OS 10.1 release and they've kept shipping uh, curl since then right and they ship some late 7.80 something nowadays i think so they've been around for a while 22 years or so they've used it in 2002 then we dropped that mpl part from the license because yeah it was completely pointless and and mit the license being as liberal as it is it really shouldn't stand in the way for anyone uh, I figured so why not just make it MIT even if it's not the plain MIT it's the curl MIT version we had a support for gzip compression because that's how you do things to get get compressed you can actually get stuff faster right if it's compressed socks support for proxies because obviously people use that and um, you know uh, fascinatingly enough keep people still use socks right 2003, now curl turns five years old, right? We added audibles, which is a way that we basically, volunteers, people in the curl community would run scripts on their machines. So they would, you know, download curl or update curl from CVS uh, daily, uh, build everything, run all the tests and email the test results back to our server. And the, our server would collect all the results and show them and we could see how curl would run and work on all those different platforms so it's you know that was uh, years before CIs and everything existed so it was a sort of a start to make sure that curl was still build and, and run on, on a wide range of platforms depending on exactly who who had machines that did what right so it, sometimes we could cover a lot of platforms sometimes we did not cover a lot of platforms and we moved on, you know, HTTP has a lot of different authentication methods and we supported the uh, digest and TLM and negotiate from in 2003 added support for FTPS. The weird uh, protocol FTP doesn't get less weird with TLS or SSL added upon it. Um, but we supported it. Um, and of course uh, we started continued to add man pages and documentation and we had 40 man pages in august um i guess for mostly that we had a lot of different uh, libcurl apis so you every every one of those had their own man page i also joined <coughs> so when basically to do name resol resolves in curl you know name resolves in general and with posix and and the uh, unixes and everything name resolving is a synchronous operation you ask for a name to resolve to a number of ip addresses and that's a synchronous call and it's really annoying because it can be really slow right it could basically take seconds and what do you do while it's resolving right you want to do something else in the meantime or what if you do uh, many connections or many transfers at the same time you don't want to wait several seconds per name resolve so one method or one approach would be to introduce a asynchronous or non-blocking name resolve call and that is what i wanted to do and that's why i got into the ARES project and they didn't want my fixes so i forked the ARES project and created the c ARES project in 2003 so i created that project with the sole purpose of making sure that we could have a dns library that would do non-blocking operations basically and it, it also does other dns related operations anyway we created it then uh, so then we could do non-blocking name results. I'm still sort of a maintainer of that project. I don't do a lot, so um, others do the heavy lifting down there now. So 2004, now we're up to 32,000 line, 32, lines of code. That's what, 
maybe 15 times what we started in, in 1998. We had a support. Yeah, back in those days, you know, large file support, that's files bigger than two gigabytes or four gigabytes. And you actually didn't have that naturally by default if you didn't pay attention. And we had a support for that. IDN and international domain names. Uh, that's, you know, uh, the eternal uh, box of surprises called IDN. And we started support with that. So you could have the, the you know, international domain names, non ASCII letters in domains. <clears throat> and uh, you know back to the large file support uh, one of the i remember one of the e uh, early flaws in some of the web servers was that they actually turned into negative content lengths when the when the files were bigger than two gigabytes so uh, for a while we had coding curl that would ignore the content length if it was negative because it would happen for for some servers uh, fun times <clears throat> Um, cheers, everyone. Don't forget to, uh, to drink. Um, it's good. Um, 2005. Um, as you can as you can tell, um, when when reading and talking about all the changes, it makes 25 years feel longer. I think we're only in 2005. We're we're only seven years in, and I've been yapping for a while. <coughs> okay. We had the support for GNU TLS, which was the second TLS library. So, you know, we got that idea. Wait, wait a minute. We don't have to support only one library. We can actually support either of these libraries. We only did, we, we didn't do it very nicely to begin with, basically to do two, a lot of if steps, a lot of separate ways to do it. I got funded in 2005 by the Swedish Internet as, um, Foundation that actually runs the .se TLD and stuff and with that funding i implemented the multi-socket api which is the event-based api for curl and libcurl is really the way if you want to do a, an insanely large amounts of parallel transfers that's the api you want to use you, you know if you go beyond maybe a hundred a thousand parallel connections that's the one you want to use because it's going it scales much better than everything else in curl and it's it's pretty neat, if if I may say so myself. Uh, support for TFTP? Why not? Is that actually is over? It's UDP based. So it was a bit different. It added a few quirks, but sure. And look at that! Someone created a tool called Git, and they adopted libcurl for for doing HTTP. So if you check out code over HTTP or HTTPS, I think these days you can only do it over HTTPS. They use libcurl to do it. They actually use libcurl for more things than just HTTPS, but still, that's the sort of the primary thing. Moving forward, 2006, right? And the 2006 is fun in curl history because we removed support for something that was supported in the API. We bumped the SO name, we changed, we broke the ABI and the API and removed support for third party FTP transfers. Third party. I'm not going to explain it for you because it doesn't really matter. That's old FTP stuff. <laughs> Don't go there. Don't use. It's basically not used anywhere else. Because it's a huge security hazard anyway if you enable it somewhere. So nobody supports it, and we haven't supported it for 17 years. And number three among TLS libraries was WolfSSL called CYASL back then. Uh, Yazel for yet another SSL library and C in the beginning for it being a C interface. <clears throat> it's fun because nowadays I work for Wolf SSL, right? So yeah, that's when we sort of started to have a surface. Added support for HTTP pipelining in 2006 and I would, we would remove it again later, right? Maybe 10 years later or something. So we bumped the SO name then, as I said, because we changed the API and ABI. Whew. And now we added support for SCP and SFTP. And here again, I was contacted by a company who said, Hi, what do you think about doing SFTP support? Wouldn't that be cool? And we would pay you to do it. They were called Adobe, the company that called me uh, and I said sure why not and then when, then when I sort of researched how to do it I figured out that there was no available SSH library 
that would do it good enough for me because none there there, there were two libraries that existed basically libssh and libssh2 and none of them did uh, non-blocking asynchronous operations the way I figured I needed to make it integrate good into curl. So I contacted both libraries and said, hey, you're missing non-blocking blah, blah, blah operations. Are you having that on your roadmap? What can I do to make it happen? And basically I went with a library that had the best response, which was the LibSSH2 library. So I joined that library, started poking on that to make sure that we could do non-blocking connections uh, and operations and <laughs> and then for some reason well I know why but the maintainer of that Sarah she basically couldn't work on it anymore so I became the maintainer of LibSSH2 maybe uh, maybe that was in 2007 but anyway I became a maintainer of LibSSH2 I did a lot of work on that I'm still co-maintainer of it I don't do a lot of work on it these days I do releases basically anyway that's how we supported SAP and SFTP. And uh, in 2007, then we were up to 50,000 lines of code because, you know, uh, those new protocols and stuff. We had the support for a new TLS library, NSS, known for, for its use by Firefox, right? And uh, back then, it was also used by Chrome and other things for, for a long time. We ported, got curl ported to the OS 400 called IBM I these days. Um, that's the image on this slide, right? That's I think that's an AS400 machine back from back in the day, big machines. And we had a support for LDAP-S and we added this, one of my favorite command line options. If you don't know about it, you should really learn about it because it's fun. It generates a C code output out of a command line. Yeah, a curl command line, you get the C code output for how to do that command line as a libcurl code fun so on the when we're reaching 10 years we ha we were at 126 command line options right up for 24 from the beginning so a five time multiplication roughly 10,000 commits already and uh, solaris shipped it as well then so we had both all the linux distros we had apple mac and we had solaris uh, pretty much you know it's getting a reach and look at that, the Flash player <laughs> on Linux by Adobe then. That's a completely different department than the Adobe I worked with for the other features. I don't think that was actually connected. Uh, but they started using libcurl anyway. And sure, and you know, these days we think of Flash as something to maybe not <laughs> think much uh, greatly about but for me it was a little bit of a feather in your hat and sort of uh, an acknowledgement or, or, or pro approval somehow that we do things right because obviously these guys they went with actually shipping their commercial product it was well commercial it was by uh, but that company anyway i think it sort of it settled in mark in my mind at least that they at least went with that in 2009 uh, we added support for CMake, so you can actually start it. Back then, you could start to build curl with CMake instead of all the tools of the other ways. Ever since then, it has been lagging behind the order tool build system, but still. And in this here, we also added support for these other emails product protocols. Same thing. I was approached by a company this year who, who asked me about would it be possible to add support for these protocols because blah blah blah, and for me, it, it felt like, um, really? That's, those are email protocols. But when I looked into them, they look exactly like F F FTP, right? Well, maybe not exactly, but very similar to FTP. So having looked at it, 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 it dawned on me that, sure, they would just be upload-download protocols like the other ones. So why not? We could have support for those. So I did. So we have support for those since 2009. And then we added more support for other weird protocols. I would say weird because this is RTSP is roughly like HP 1.0 with some other magic on top of it. Uh, it's never been very well maintained in curl, so it's always been having its warts and flaws, but um, it's there. I know people are using it uh, or have been using it. I don't know. Uh, 
it's one of those areas that always need a little bit more love than it actually is getting. And in 2010, we finally switched from our trusted CVS to Git. So we were not part of, you know, a lot of, I was actually a committer in the subversion project when the subversion project started also in early 2000s, right? And because I thought that we could do something better than CVS and, the, and the, that better one would be subversion. But I think subversion had its flaws in it it was only a better CVS. It was not a, a distributed version control system in the way Git and other things were. So, and also in, in the curl project, we never really did any complicated stuff with, you know, branches and stuff. We basically had main branch. We merge code in the main branch. We released from the main branch. So it, it was easy for us to stick to CVS for quite a long time. But in 2010, we switched immediately to Git. We got switched hosting from SourceForge, which which was already then more or less dying or going is stupid in many ways. I mean, it hasn't gone less stupid. It seems to be still alive, right? But it's uh, you should not use SourceForge for anything because it's mostly a silly these days. So we switched to GitHub and we're still on GitHub today, right? Added more protocols, added more TLS libraries. Both of these libraries we actually removed later, but Still, we added them in 2010. 2011, we were now up at 80,000 lines of code. And that's the cookie RFC I mentioned before that we uh, finally got the documentation for, right? We added support in 99, 12 years later, the cookie RFC. And the cookie RFC, I, I could talk a lot about the cookie RFC, but I'm not going to do that. But I'm going to instead just say that um, it was written by someone affiliated with a browser and the browser people got a lot of their opinions <laughs> uh, on print in that uh, spec basically so i think we adopted the curl implementation a little bit depending on things that uh, that was finally nailed down in this rfc and i think this is one of the better things with this document is that it actually documents a lot of weird behaviors that the browsers were all doing already. So now you can actually learn what they were doing without reading their code or, or investigating what they were doing. Well, so this is also the first year where when we added this script to the curl source tree called check source, it's just the name of the little tool that we have that verifies code style. So it's basically meant to warn on code that violates the curl source code guidelines basically you know wrong indentation two long lines blah 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 it was very simple from the beginning it has become more complicated and more advanced over time so nowadays it can actually warn for quite a lot of violations and it turns it turns out it's really useful to have a tool to do this because a robot that tells the user that they're wrong it i mean in general the user takes that better just a tool that warns instead of users having to tell others in, in reviews that they should you know put white spaces everywhere and stuff like that we had a support for tls well we had stuff in tls and we got over 100 committers and i think partly because we switched to git so with git we could keep proper separation between um, authors and committers right so these are actually authors, I think, not actually commit in, in Git language. I mean, different authors of code that we merged into code uh, in the sorry into the repository. So yes, CVS was still better than than RCS. I, I actually started out with RCS, the first few source files that went in the beginning of the HP get days, switched to it. CVS when it got into multiple files, but then I stuck to CVS until we switched to Git. In 2012, we were up to 149 command line options. We had a support for these native TLS backends like S channel and secure transport. S channel for Windows, secure transport for Mac, right? So you wouldn't use any, wouldn't have to use any third party libraries. You could actually use the system libraries to do TLS like HTTPS and the other uh, TLS based protocols. And by, by this time we had uh, this fancy VTLS internal API to, so that internally we would only use a single API to do TLS stuff and we would split out to different backends internally to do 
the actual communication with the underlying third-party library. We had a support for MetaLink, the one that Harry mentioned earlier that we removed support for later. MetaLink is a way to download the same stuff from many different places. Preferably in parallel, but you can also do it serially or you know switch over, try one of these, or if it fails, try the other one. Pretty fancy feature, but in the end, maybe not. Uh, in 2012, I did a blog post where my by my estimate we had 550 million users of curl might be at some around this time i started to realize that um, there are a few users of curl anyway this is uh, getting somewhere getting some traction maybe people are liking this uh, it's not uh, not too shabby <laughs> And this nice photo from Silicon Valley um, is from 2012 too. And this is one of my one of the favorite photos, not only because it's that early and it was a um, billboard with my product on it, but it's also because it's such a stupid billboard. And, and you know, that command line on there, what is it? Don't tell my boss with a C, C, C++ comment. I don't know. What, um, it's fun. Anyway, it's kind of a, so that's, that's one is always part of my curl presentation these days because it's such a fun. And that company, the Dice company, they, um, I blogged about this at the time and they, the marketing director actually emailed me later and said they were um, deeply embarrassed. Yeah, yeah, it that happens when you left like leave marketing people to do something <laughs> like it it, it. it it sounded like a good idea, and then the marketing people came in. Exactly, I I think maybe they should have involved at least one person, not from the marketing department, when they did that. <laughs> but uh, but it was fun. So in twenty thirteen, we changed everything. Uh, we changed the internal architecture in Carl so to always do the multi interface internally, which basically made make sure that we do everything non-blocking internally, which we didn't do before. But previously we had pretty much two code paths for everything, blocking, non-blocking, so it was just stupid. So we actually simplified a lot of things. Maybe we broke a few things as well, but it made sense and it still makes sense actually. We added the first support for HTTP2, hence the logo there. Um, it was still two years before the spec would arrive, but we started playing with it. And we added support for happy eyeballs. You know, the way where you try different connections at the same time. You try a, a IPv4 and IPv6 connections uh, at the same time, and then you go with the one that completes first. So that's a better way to handle uh, dual stack platforms, really. And then we added support for GSKit, uh, another TLS library for a limited set of platforms and we reached a thousand contributors contributors that are not being committers but con contributors are people that just getting credited for whatever help they do S submitting a bug report you're credited for submitting the bug report so then you're a contributor so we reached a thousand by then and we had reached 108 case uh, test cases 800 test cases so i mentioned that we started the test cases in 2003 right or whatever it was so took 10 years to reach 800. Um, I think maybe we have, uh, that's roughly the speed we've done, right? Because I think we're at 1600 test cases today. So 10 years later, we're, we've only doubled that. Um, but of course, eh, the number is difficult to count test cases, right? Because what is in a test case? A test case can be simple, it can, can be complicated, it could be do a lot of things or a few things. And we added this first CI jobs in 2013, 10 years ago the first two ones and we actually were stuck on two ones for for several years if, if i recall it correctly so now we're getting sort of this is now 16 years in right this is the year i started working for mozilla with firefox so i actually started getting to work with http and stuff um, during the day right and not only <laughs> at night when i played with curl so now we were at 161 command line options and we had already 20 reported cvs because you know people started to look at the code i don't think it is because it started turns bad suddenly but suddenly people started to actually pay attention started to look at it and point out that we did stupid things and in this year i actually split the you know curl the lib curl has uh, one particular option, uh, one particular function actually that has a lot of options 
basically uh, how to do different things you know set url set different options and in 2014 i split out those options into their own individual man pages so therefore I, we went from 59 to 270 man pages in just a few i would say weeks uh, um, and believe me that was <laughs> That was quite some work. Manually have to, you know, convert those small sections into new complete man pages. Uh, yeah, that was a lot of work and a lot of macros in my text editor. And uh, um, yes, fun times. I think it was a good thing. I think we have benefited a lot by that. Uh, and we had the support. LibreSSL was one of those. Uh, 2014 was the year of Heartbleed, wasn't it? So I think Heartbleed was 2014. And as a result of Heartbleed, people looked at OpenSSL and they say, hey, this is OpenSSL. We need to do something about it. And one of the ways to do it, uh, something about it was to fork it and create a new uh, OpenSSL flavor, right? LibreSSL being one of them, uh, those, and the, um, one of the early ones. We had a support for HTTP2 real i say i don't remember exactly why i say real so let's not stick on that um smb and smbs version one i didn't write the support nobody's using version one these days it's not that fun so the third open ssl fork that got an attraction was the one by google called boring ssl um still around of course still used quite a lot we had the support for embed TLS and another TLS library. So you can see the TLS libraries are just, you know, coming on like, uh, I don't know, like what, like something. We had the support for HTTP multiplex, HTTP2 multiplexing. Really complicated because it's uh, suddenly, for the first time in curl history, you know, 17 years in, we had this concept where a connection and a transfer is not the same thing. Previously, you would always do one transfer per connection at the time, right? You could do them serially over a connection, but you know, there were always, that was always a one-to-one -one mapping between transfers and connections. And suddenly you would do many transfers over the same connection. And it, it kind of a revolution internally in the architecture. And maybe, maybe there are traces left and still suffering from this because the original curl was not made for this. Uh, um, but now we suddenly needed to adapt uh, adapt to it. Fun stuff. We had the support for HTTP2 server push. Uh, always been a um, less uh, popular thing. Many people are saying it's bad. It's not very much used. The browsers have dropped support for server push, I think, already. So it's not, and uh, it's mostly being frowned frowned upon, really. So, but curl supports it for HTTP2 at least. I could mention that you know the logo on this slide is there because they sponsored my work on HTTP2 because Netflix is using curl and libcurl in all their uh, embedded devices basically that plays Netflix a lot of TVs I think they actually use it in the Android app as well so Netflix is a big libcurl user it was is I don't keep track so I don't really know we had a support for the public suffix list and uh, the public suffix list is a really weirdo uh, let's not get into that if you don't know what it is um, it's about cookies and ugly stuff read up about it we reached 80 uh, 20 000 commits in 2015 still now eight years away from today right eight years ago we just recently surpassed 30,000 so we can say it took us eight more years to reach that I started working on the book everything curl in 2015 in 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 the autumn so I, I think September because I felt that it would we needed some place to you know, describe things better the man pages are really good as a sort of when you needed to look up the reference material really if you know what you're looking for you look for it and you find it but if you don't know what you're looking for if you just want to know where do I start how do I do things I figured I needed a better place to do that and I couldn't really figure out a good way to do that with man pages so I figured I would do that as a book maybe and I had already before this written to other attempts of books or two books really short books on HP2 
right because I hadn't started HP 3 one by before that but I started with the HP 2 one and then I made this one I would later do the HP 3 one uh, so yeah that's available and it's online and free of course um, and then um, in 2015 by the way that's the year when the HP 2 RFC was published too in May that RFC arrived so then it become you know the official real uh, protocol and as Ising says in Twitch that's the year he implemented HTTP 2 for the Apache server as well so that's the year when when uh, HTTP 2 really uh, exploded in implementations everywhere and in 2016 we were at 125 185 command line options that we're growing really fast and we started to default HTTP 2 over HTTPS because it, with HTTPS, you know, you can negotiate which protocol you're going to use sort of behind it. So it, it was actually, it made sense that you can do that by default without breaking anything because it would just fall back to HTTP 1 if it didn't negotiate HTTP 2. We, added support for this fun thing called HPS proxy that is HPS to the proxy so meaning that if you would do HPS through the proxy it would be HPS over HPS like the dual layer thing we added support for TLS 103 for the first time and basically TLS I mean the TLS implementations are already always done by the TLS libraries in our case um, so we didn't actually implement the version um, I mean TLS by ourselves, but we had to support it, so we had to adjust the use of, of the TLS libraries and stuff. Um, so, so we had to ad adapt and, and do things to make sure that we support 1.3. Um, someone asked me now hey, when I started streaming on Twitch, and I don't remember. It wasn't that long ago, maybe four or five years ago, something. Um, I've been streaming on and off for a while. So then TLS 1.3 came. We had a code audit by Cure53. Um, uh, and they took a look at curl code and poked at it. And they spent, I think, six weeks or something. They spent, spent a significant chunk of time on it. They found a bunch of problems. Um, I don't, th I, I think maybe it turned out to like six or seven CVEs or something. I don't remember the count right now, but, but at least they did a good job. They found a bunch of things that we fixed. So um, thumbs up for that. And it still, they didn't find anything critical. So I guess it was, it was all around pretty good. And now I think now we're reaching modern times, right? 2017. We added support for this fun thing called multi SSL, which is a fun thing. You know, I mentioned already that we support a lot of different TLS libraries, 13 actually today, but most of them you p pick one at build time, right? And you build curl to use that single one and it'll use that one when you run curl. But since 2017, you can actually build curl to use more than one, build with more than one, and then you can select which one to use at runtime. You can select only once, but th th before you use it the first time, you can select which, select which one to use, um, which is a fun thing. And, and really, uh, I would say uh, maybe a bit niche and really hard for anyone to understand when you would do that and why you would do that. But still, we got that support added in 2017 and we got it for a particular purpose. Uh, I'm not going to get into that, but it was still fun. Uh, and in 2017, we got support from Fastly, and hey, we're using Fastly's Zoom account right now, so thank you, Fastly. But anyway, I was just going to say that Fastly, before this point in time, <laughs> it, our website was not very stable. And in particular, uh, we suffered from this, that I hosted my blog and my personal website on the same server as the curl website. So some, sometimes when I would do something like post a blog post that would get some traffic, uh, particularly if if it you know got exposed on Hacker News or something like that, uh, or Reddit, then, then a lot of users would go to my site to read my blog post and my site would just die uh, by the traffic. And it, you know, it would remain dead then for hours because it would be hammered by, by traffic from those sites until 
people grew bored by the server not responding and then it would sort of slowly come back to life and by 2017 that was really uh, <laughs> boring <laughs> or uh, not really a good way to run a website uh, or whatever <laughs> however you should phrase it in a, in a good way so anyway fastly reached out and said hey we can we can host your site for you and since then they do and they do it in in a great way and they really and so they host they take care of basically all the traffic to the curl website and, and my personal website and offload 99 point something percent of all traffic and they then cache it and host it and it works really really well my server it, it basically doesn't have to do much uh, heavy lifting and the fastest server or servers are hosting the world and then much faster and much better than we ever could in 2017 then we also had the support for this cool thing called SSL key log file which is really I don't know who who invented this from the beginning I think that's one of the browsers could have been Firefox I guess anyway if you set this environment variable to a file name you can have um, curl or your browser save uh, SSL and TLS secrets to that file and if you then make Wireshark for example use that file you can then analyze and decrypt TLS traffic uh, live from curl or from Firefox or from Chrome or whoever is using this SSL keylog file concept it's actually very cool and it's a really good way to analyze snoop on understand T TLS based traffic Uh, which is fun and uh, don't forget to drink your 25 year old single malt it's very good this is my second shot here so anyway 2017 now only six years back in time right and as you can see there's just like this constant constant thing of adding tiny things Maybe what you what, what isn't really visible when I'm talk about all this is that there's never any really long term plan here. We're adding all of these things, short term plan. You, we never know what's going to happen long term, right? We never, we can't really predict what's going to happen in five years or even two years. We just we just know what what's at hand right now. Should we add this? Should we not add this? I sometimes think that's kind of an fascinating just to look at where we have ended up because it was certainly not obvious back then where we were going and uh, I mean that we were going to end up where we are today added support for Brotly then another compression algorithm so that's the second comp uh, HTTP compression algorithm we became part of the uh, Google OSS FUS project in 2017 which is a fun project they do fuzzing on open source projects so if you're lucky they will adopt you to the project and they will fuzz your code for you which is good because they do that on, on google hardware and they do that all the time uh, and you get reports when they find stuff and that's good because they shouldn't find stuff because when they find stuff it means that you did something wrong and we've initially we found a lot of problems or a lot of possible bugs and possible security problems so really good stuff and we improved curl a lot especially in the beginning when they started doing the fuzzing in 2017 we had our first curl up our annual curl developers meetups meetings weekends um, in nuremberg nuremberg in germany long story but it was uh, we ended up there by some fun coincidence 2017 look i'm breaking the slide pattern here in 2017 I got this medal I showed you before, um, the gold coin, the Polham Prize Award, Polham's preset in Swedish, that's why it says so on this little box here with a gold medal inside. It is an engineering award, but it's been handing out to sw in Sweden to Swedes since our 150, 160 years or something, so it's, it's really, really old 
and distinguished and is for engineering accomplishments and blah 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 and that's quote there on the screen is actually from the motivation in the award diploma thing I received and if you're not a Swede you don't know who the guy to the right here is but he is the king of Sweden his majesty the king Carl Gustav the 16th that was fun ah, it was a great evening that's uh, that's something to remember uh, for a long time actually and as I've said on a podcast recently I've not gotten a single medal since so it was sort of the peak there okay 2018 things continued to move believe it or not even after I got that medal so we had the support for DNS over HUS and the reason I added that particular thing in that particular time is that I, I actually worked on DNS over HBS for Firefox exactly in that time frame and once I had implemented it for Firefox uh, it sort of was sort of in my mind and I basically just made a very sort of then I knew that I, I could do this for curl just as well because I just did it for Firefox so why couldn't I do it for curl so then we would get this support so I added support for that uh, a bit of a controversial technology back then at least maybe a little less these days and we added the support we added the curl API in 2018 um, or you you know uh, maybe you don't know URLs are really never there's nothing <laughs> I mean what what is a URL a URL is something that everyone thinks they know what it is but there's no real standard for what a URL is there are different standards and different people think different standards should apply nobody really follows anyone closely every implementation basically uh, implemented slightly slightly differently so if you try to just you know through 15 different implementations on, on the same urls you'll see that they all end up parsing that slightly differently um, which is of course annoying it's a security problem so I decided that we should make make it our own API or our own par uh, parser externally available so that application that needs URL parsing and if they are also using curl they should use the same parser just to um, be able to avoid security problems because the security problems tend to come when you use different parsers and you think that they will behave the same way or treat the URL the same way which they won't in some cases you can be sure that if you use two different parsers you can be absolutely certain that there are cases that they will not agree on how to handle a particular API oh sorry a particular URL and if, if you're just a clever person you can probably exploit it in some way so anyway that's why we introduced the curl API in 2018 um, I think it's been pretty good since then uh, and then of course we make sure that we use that same parser internally so it's the same URL parsing that we expose to users that we use internally so there's always just one way to to treat a, a URL in curl well there's one way but there are also options to make it behave differently but okay and then we had the support for the libssh backend so suddenly you know we had a lot of different TLS libraries when in 2018 we suddenly introduced why not also introduce many SSH backends so now you could do SCP or SFTP using either one of those different SSH libraries because why not and, tw and Microsoft shipped curl in Windows I think they actually only announced it in 2018 and they actually did ship the first in 2019 maybe but anyway they the, that's that's when in the time frame they started shipping the real curl so they get curl from us they build it and ship it in curl uh, so in Windows in Windows 10 and since then also in Windows 11 of course uh, years later when that came uh, and we started defaulting to HP2 over HPS and we were at 129,000 lines of code um, five years from now or, or five years ago <clears throat> and by now we had added a bunch of uh, CI tests then as you can see 27 CI jobs in 2018 and 1200 test cases started starting to mm, become better and better um, uh, on how to you know verify curl make sure that we don't do regressions and stuff like that 
boof, in 2019. Actually, what I didn't say here, at, by, by the end of the year, I think in November or something, I quit Mozilla. I left them, no more C++ for me. And in 2019, I instead joined Wolf SSL and started working on Curl full time. Yay. It's a little bit of a dream coming true eventually, you know, and in 2019, uh, I mean, you know, I've, I've been ham talking about this for a while now, but I started this in 98, right? So by this time, I had worked on curl for 21 years. So it felt good to finally after 21 years, I could actually work on curl full time, my project, my baby, and now I could do that full time and uh, get food on the table at the same time pretty awesome and I was thrilled to do it and I was happy to do it with my friends at Wolf SSL that I had been I'd known them and I you know I, I had the support for Wolf SSL itself was it 2006 so 13 years before this so it was a it was a great fit Wolf SSL they were my friends already the people there Larry the the, the CEO and Todd and all the others so it was great to finally start there and start working with Curl full time I do support for customers and we sign up them for with uh, support contract with a contract development. Awesome stuff. Um, and this is really the explanation to why I can do curl full time. This is because we get support contracts with customers who need help and want help and want uh, their stuff to work better. So we add the support for the alt service header. In 2019, uh, one of those things that we might at some point just uh, think uh, was uh, unnecessary because that's a header that is possibly going away in the future. Anyway, four years ago it was uh, good to add and we removed, I mentioned that already several times by now, but we removed, removed pipelining again. I think we added it in 2000, what was it, 6? So maybe it had its uh, 13 years or so, was it? Uh, pipelining being you know, HTTP 1.1 way to do many requests before you started to get the responses back. So you could do request, 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 and then get response, response, response back. So you didn't have to wait for the response before you could send the next request. It was a very uh, error prone and, and servers would have a hard time for it. And the internet was not really made for pipelining. Um, so it was never really any success was never any good thing to use. So instead, we removed it. We added a bug bounty in 2019 in, in cooperation with HackerOne, hence the logo there it's, uh, on, on the slanted one. Um, and we still run it on HackerOne and together with them, we actually in cooperation even more with HackerOne these days because HackerOne even runs this sub project they called the internet bug bounty and the internet bug bounty is the one who are actually paying all the bug bounty rewards even for our bugs these days so we don't have to pay the bug bounties from from the curl fund the hacker one pays those bug bounties from the ibb fund awesome stuff because they pay a lot of money for our bugs um, yep it's cool <laughs> I, I approve <laughs> someone someone is getting their bug bounties paid out there yes like Harry. Uh, and uh, in 2019, we started adding the HTTP 3 support. Uh, so that's a long time ago, right? Uh, four years ago by now. And it's still marked experimental. Uh, we still haven't removed the experimental label from it. We, we want to do that and we hope to do that soon. Uh, yeah. We'll see <laughs> where that goes. Uh, Yep, and we had the support for e-tags. We had the support for another TLS library. This is the an Amiga version, an Amiga OpenSSL fork, I think. Uh, so a lot of those. And, and yet another uh, TLS library targeted for embedded small f footprint things. And the first Docker image of curl appeared in 2019. Um, it has then been pulled uh, very soon, 5 billion times since 2019. So four years, 5 billion pulls. I'm not sure what that says, but anyway, that's the truth. Uh, we added support for parallel transfers in 2020. So, you know, we did support parallel transfers in libcurl since 
well basically 2000 I don't remember when did we do the multi interface did I even mention that today uh, I think maybe my my 25 year old drink is making me not remember if I told you that or not but uh, anyway it, pretty much the, the multi interface has always been able to do parallel transfers with curl and, and multi interface has existed for decades and so then at this point in time I finally uh, sort of you know did the work and made sure that curl the curl command line tool could actually use the multi interface and hence do parallel transfers with the command line tool which I had been wanting to do for a long time, but I never really got around to do it. But then in 2020, I did the usual. And <laughs> what's funny is then I could use one of those last single letter command line options for that, the capital Z, Z. And then yeah, why did I use that letter? Well, I only had two letters left to choose from. <laughs> so the, now, now the quiz is the game here. Can you mention the only letter, ASCII letter, that is not used as a command line, short command line option to curl? A to Z, lowercase, uppercase, which one is not used yet? I know which one it is, but we saved that one for, I don't know for what, it's the uppercase W. Um, <clears throat> Uh, so there's only one lowercase w option. There's no uppercase w. So uh, just as you know, we have that saved for when we when we really really need a short <laughs> command line option, the last one. Well, there might be, I'm there might be some digits left, like the number four, number five. Uh, but uh, anyway, I digress. So we. In 2020, I also got, finally, I managed to nick the, the curl domain, curl.se. Again, se is the uh, Swedish domain, right? Sweden.se, and I'm in Sweden. So it, I've always wanted the .se version of curl. And I tried to, to, by the time I figured it out in the early 2000s, it was already taken. And I sort of monitored its use over the years, and it will always occupy the use. It was actually used by curling curling teams and curling associations for a long time for many years maybe 10 15 years and then some at some point it switched to some gambling ad site possibly because they managed to nick the name and wanted to just use the rumors or, or, or the good name of the previous site and then for a few years it just got stale and then in 2019 i tried to contact i actually did contact the owner of the domain because he had failed to update it or, or refresh the registration and tried to buy it from the person uh, but he basically said that i didn't offer enough money and i had basically and i didn't wasn't able to communicate anymore and then after and the next year when it expired again i tried to contact the person but he never responded and that it just expired for real i tried to buy it you know in one of those auction things so race for for the domain i lost the race someone else bought it instead of me uh, so i was quite disappointed uh, when when i lost that race because you know that was basically the first time in 20 years i had the opportunity and I've, i thought i was I had lost it again for another 20 years or whatever. Uh, but then it turned out that it was a friend of mine who also sort of wanted to, it to become mine. So he, he entered the race and he nicked it before me. So he donated the domain to me. So now I am the owner of it. And I, in 2020, late 2020, I think, I transitioned the website and everything over to this domain. Yeah from the previous one then so you can actually you can of course still go to the old um, domain name curl.hacks.se and it still works right but it'll work for a long time but this is shorter this is better i can see how the twitch chat now got into sidetracked into finding short letter options to use for f future commands or options command line options <clears throat> in 2020 I started to do release presentations on video only three years ago I it turned 
it's been a, quite popular, I think. I got a lot of good feedback, at least, and I enjoy it. it. I think it's fun to do them. I appreciate joining with, with friends, showing up in the stream and, and talking with you, friends. So uh, I like it. I'm going to try to continue doing it. The number of people who are actually watching the release videos, I don't, I mean, it's in the between 500 and 1,000 views, I think, per per release. So it's not super popular, but it's not forgotten or not ignored either. So uh, I'm going to continue doing that. I also got the domain curl.dev in 2020. I got it also as a sort of a donation from Google. Google being the one who actually owns and manages the .dev uh, TLD. I actually complained to them because it was it's so expensive to buy. So I told them I don't want to buy it because it's too expensive. Why would I buy that? So they gave me a hefty rebate and then I couldn't really say that I shouldn't buy it because if it's no price, then I could buy it. So I bought it, but it, without any real purpose for it. So I own it and then I moved the everything curl book to that domain because I figured maybe it could be suitable. I don't know. Uh, so if you have other ideas what to do with curl.dev, tell me. I actually, so I have the everything curl book there now. I also have my uncurled book on that domain as, as un.curl.dev. So it has turned out useful. If you go just to that website, curl.dev, it's not that useful. I did experimental. I added support for the MQTT protocol in 2020. I figured maybe that could be something. Um, in case people were interested more for IoT things, you know, automating things that are actually MQTT based. I wouldn't say that it has been a huge success. I'm not sure of many people actually using it or trying it. So maybe I should have just skipped that. Support for HSTS, uh, the way for curl to upgrade HTTP connections to HTTPS transparently, basically, if you if the server has told you to do that. We, um, and, and this was actually pretty good, I think. We refined or redesigned the dash, dash dash help option in 2020 because it got a little out of hand, right? 200, and by this time we had 220, 230 command line options, right? And having them all just show there as a wall of text, that scared users away. Um, so, we fixed it and it's much better now with you know categories you can do dash dash help in a category added support for z standard the facebook another hp compression format um, in 2020 and we also added support for json i put in the dash w option um, you know the dash w being the dash dash write out option also maybe one of one other favorite command line options how to get extra output extra information output from curl transfers really a lot of different things and you get different variables you get you get to choose what to output from what you'd want to know from an, from a previous transfer um, and in in 2020 then we added this json object thing so you can I'll put a lot of information in JSON format because JSON seems to be a pretty popular format. And a third SSH backend was introduced in 2020. Of course, I'm a little bit biased here, but WolfSSH is then a library done by WolfSSL. And as I told you, I work for WolfSSL, so there's a little bit of a in, inside baseball here. But anyway, um, if you want to use that, you can build curl to use it. In 2021, I was told that curl was used to land on Mars, hence that little thing there. Um, that was fun. But we also, I was contracted to s implement support for Hyper. Hyper is an HTTP library written in Rust, right? So in 2021, I actually think it started late 2020, but we had the support for Hyper as an alternative HTTP backend in curl. I actually then re-architectured curl internals a little bit so that you could select to use built-in HTTP code or hyper HTTP code to do a bunch of HTTP stuff. With the thinking being that you could then 
select to use more safe code uh, library things instead of C code like hyper uh, and we had a support for Russell's being a TLS library written in Rust so Rust uh, library uh, bonanza in 2021 and then the Mars landing happened was it in March Mars March March oh, that time frame was it April some somewhere they call it the 2020 helicopter mission which is fun because I think it happened in 2021 but anyway uh, NASA has confirmed that curl was used in that mission uh, so and since then we we count curl on two planets I received that less less uh, interesting and less uh, fun death threat in 2021 I blogged about it at the time it was not I mean sometimes sometimes it's easy to to joke about things and, and you know brush things off and some but um, I will tell you that that threat really so that it penetrated my thick skin even for a while I think it I went it, it went past me pretty soon I got over it but it for a moment there it felt really I don't know intense hard harsh bad uh, okay so we had the support for uh, certificate things as blobs in 2021 basically meaning that you can provide them as memory objects instead of uh, telling curl to read them from files a long time coming mostly for use cases where you maybe not have file system or systems or or you have a lot of hard-coded things maybe in 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 areas just you know store them in rom or ram or something and uh, to many people's delight we had the support for gopher s that's gopher over tls it was easy to do right cheap easy the tls stuff is just the same tls stuff we already support for other protocols so adding the tls layer on top of this was really easy a small patch hey was easy to do gopher s we reached 20,000 stars on GitHub. You know, stars on GitHub, it's just a number. It doesn't say anything, but we reached that at least in 2021. Now, we're getting close to um, today, right? This was last year. So what have we done since last year? Have we done anything since last year? It's just a blank slide here. No, we added, uh, I started adding the, the WebSockets API in 2022, still experimental, uh, and it's uh, growing slowly um it's getting there it's getting used more and more i want to get more people to use it to tell me how it works so that we can uh, iron out the quirks and, and the final wrinkles so that we can maybe at some point soon remove the experimental tag from that uh, we removed support from for MesaLink, which was MesaLink, metalink two different beasts MesaLink was a tls library uh, we removed support for it. We added the header API support in 2022. The header API being um, the API to libcurl to get information about HTTP headers in the previous response. In, I mean, in a convenient way. It turns out that a lot of applications want that. They, you want to get to know exactly the contents of a particular header in the previous response. And Previously, an application would have to do a little bit of parsing and a little bit of handling and understanding HTTP and HTTP header syntaxes and stuff. Uh, so, so basically to help applications to avoid duplicating code and uh, avoid, I mean, doing mistakes in, in application code, we can just as well provide a header, uh, an API for this. We didn't really have it internally, but now when we did it, we could take advantage of it internally as well so we also simplified a, a few internal stuff with it we added support for msh3 i didn't really mention it before but this is the third http3 backend so by 2022 we now have 13 tls backends three ssh backends three ms uh, sorry http3 backends uh, and we had different idn backends we have different name resolver backends so a lot of different backends. Um, that's curl is basically a maze of different backends to select from when you build curl. And we still innovate and improve the command line too. 
not a, not everything is about the library, right? So we've added support for in last year alone, we added support for rate, which is a way to slow down when you want to do a lot of requests, but you don't want them to happen too fast. Like do this request, but only one per minute per second, 12 per minute, five per hour, something like that. And you can set the rate so that you would you will not sort of overload your server and or, or get rate limited somehow or maybe even get errors a url query is a way to model your query part of urls in your command line and of course json is a short way to do to use one one when you want to send a json in posts to server as hp posts so we're still innovating adding uh, weird command line options uh, well, hopefully not too weird. Some of them are, of course, very niche because we already support all the major use cases, right? So whatever we add now, we add support for more niche use cases. So maybe the, what we add nowadays are not for the masses necessarily, but for, for a big enough chunk of users to, to make a difference and make things easier and re, sort of maybe make mistakes less likely, perhaps. We had another, we had the second security audit of, uh, of Curl in 2022, this time then done by Trailer Bits. It's sponsored by OpenSSF, hence their logo on the slide. Um, they spent 400 man hours on uh, reviewing code um, and reviewing co uh, Curl in general. It ended up as two CVEs, so and none, none of them very serious. So, I think it was pretty good, uh, all in all. And moving on, 2023. Um, I still, ha uh, it's hard to talk a lot and drink whiskey at the same time. So let's just take a moment and sip. 2023 this year what have we been doing this year well we're only at uh, well mid end of march right but this year we added stefan added support for http 3 with fallback and what this means is that we now can use um http 3 much more convenient and much more uh easy than we could before so now you can actually ask curl to do HTTP 3 but if it doesn't work it will fall back and use HTTP 2 or HTTP 1. So now we can actually move forward and you as a user can select to use HTTP 3 and it'll fall back and use another one if it can't use HTTP 3. Pretty much the way you want it. Pretty much the way you think your browser is using it. It'll use HTTP 3 if it can. It'll go down to the early, earlier versions if it can't use 3. So this is a big step towards us uh, removing the experimental tag from HTTP 3 support. I think we still have a bit of com uh, communication and, and, and uh, maybe convincing to do with a uh, quick and HTTP 3 library people so that they also f are on board with us saying that we want to go non-beta, we want to go non-experimental. But ideally, hopefully soon, hopefully the, even already this spring, that's the plan, that's the hope, that's the wish. 30,000 commits just the other day. Um, it would have been fun to do that in sync exactly with this 25 year uh, anniversary thing, but uh, yeah, we missed it with a few days. And this is today from 1998 to 2023, March 20, curl version 8.0.0. Uh, and amusingly enough, of course, I messed up the release and we found problems immediately. So I had to do a 8.0.1 release just hours after that 8.0.0 release. So, <clears throat> Um, I'm not sure if that says anything about version 8, but it also, uh, someone else tried to comfort me and say, but yeah, you know, some nobody's uh, comfortable with installing the .0 releases anyway, so maybe it's good to make a .1 release so that people will feel more convinced that they can install it. 
anyway, it it sort of took a little bit. Uh, uh, I mean, it made this day a little less <laughs> good <laughs> than I anticipated and that I wanted it to be. But uh, uh, yeah, that was, uh, I think, actually, we identified the bad commit. I reverted it. So 801 should be fine. I still want to do the fix, the change that I reverted. So I'm working on fixing it better and, and doing a second attempt. But that will be for uh, the next version instead. Yes, uh, it, it, in this particular case, it was sort of, I was so calm before this release. I had everything lined up. I didn't do any last minute fixes. It felt like this is this is going great. It's perfect. I'm just going to do this release and it's going to be fine. And then it turned out that yeah, due to some really, really silly, stupid me, we didn't do the testing properly. So we actually missed a few obvious test, flow, uh, test failures really. So I hadn't spotted those failures. Uh, so that's why we shipped with those failures because I hadn't seen them because blah, blah, blah. Uh, anyway, 25 years. Uh, uh, yes, we try to blame icing for most of the problems, but sometimes it's hard when you can see my name next to the commit, but mm, yeah. So we're 25 years in at 156 lines, uh, 156 uh, thousand lines of code we started with 2400 um 25 years ago so that was that 75 times the amount something like that uh now we're at 486 man pages quite a stunning amount there i think we're at uh, somewhere around 90,000 lines of documentation we're at f close to 1600 test cases um i bet we will reach there very soon because we're adding them at a rate of a few every week i'd say um, since uh, just today we're at 141 published cvs i know that's not something to brag about i mean having a lot of cvs is not good it's not really bad either but i i'm, I'm not, this is not really i'm not trying to actually value this this is just facts right this is what we've accomplished someone has reported well harry has reported i don't know how many how many have you reported harry 24 uh, of these 42 yeah 24 <laughs> 24 is the total now <laughs> so it's quite a lot <laughs> quite a lot and i think number two has reported like five or something <laughs> but anyway the, so and and nowadays we have 121 ci jobs i think that's actually inaccurate but anyway uh, something in that uh, area a lot of people have contributed to curl so far and we're adding a lot of, i think we're adding a few hundred every year to this list of contributors in the thanks list in the git repository people that are committing to curl uh, 1125 we're adding basically i think we're adding a little bit maybe close to 100 per year recently so quite a large growth there as well. And as we just passed 30,000 commits, we have paid, or I, would, I should say that the, the curl bug bounty then has uh, paid uh, with accounting today's CVEs that we published today, we uh, end up in over 56,000 uh, US dollars in bug bounties. Um, and this, is wrong actually because <laughs> i made a slide before we made the made the dot one release so this is actually 216 releases uh, counting the second release of today because who doesn't want to do two releases when you have a birthday uh, and you would say how, I, how often has it happened that we've done two releases on the same day before in the kernel history but then you know if you have done a project for 15 not 15 25 years you know that all everything has already happened at least once before in the history of the project so we've actually this is actually the third time that we release two versions on the same day the last time was uh, the last time we did it was in october 2000 and we did it also another time in 1999 so mm, 
let's not uh, make this uh, a new trend. We're at 250 command line options. Again, this is not a lot of people then throw it back at me and say, well, that's nothing to boast about, right? It's just complexity. Why have it, why do you have 250 command line options? Uh, nobody can remember them and it's hard to use and you know the man page is growing and blah blah blah. And yes, but this is again back to what I've told you about many times. This is because we don't break existing functionality. We cannot remove functions or command line options because then we would break existing functionality. We can add stuff, we don't remove things. We have 91 public API functions. We have 302 options to this API call. The curl is a setup function. It's the primary function in libcurl that you set options, transfer behavior really. You can set callbacks, options, protocol details, request timeouts, blah, blah, blah. There are 300 options for that. And they all have their own man page. So that's why you have so many man pages. We have been, uh, we have got reports on curl running on 92 operating systems. And of, yes, Linux is one. Linux distros are not different operating systems. They're just Linux. Uh, CPUs, number 28 different CPU architectures. Um, and it's just stunning to just come up with 28 different CPU architectures. And I mentioned it already, two planets. We support now 28 protocols. If you by protocol mean URL schemes, because that's what I mean here. What's a protocol? Um, let's not uh, get in. Let's not get into that now. 13 TLS libraries. I mentioned this already. Three SSH libraries, three HTTP3 libraries, and we uh, then estimate count on curl being installed in yeah more than 10 billion installations. I would. I'm I'm actually quite tempted and, and bumping my regular sort of estimate here and say 20 or 30. Uh, I'm not sure exactly when I'm going to do that or for what particular purpose, but there are like 7 billion mobile phones and 1 billion tablets and they all run curl somewhere. That's 8 billion just there. Uh, so I don't know. That's at least where I was going to end with my slideshow 25 years of curl uh, 1998 to 2023. So yep, that's uh, that's what I wanted to say with my slide set. And now I'm going to stop sharing that and see if anyone else wants to say something. And my drink is almost finished. Oh. Um, I could say a uh, couple of words. Um, I did a tweet about this uh, on Mastodon also um, about the vulnerabilities and uh, and the code quality. 